Hi, I'm Megan, and welcome to the Figure Skating Heart. I hope everybody had um, a good holiday, whatever you were up to. And I wanted to share with you all something very exciting that happened to me um, just before Christmas. But to set this up, I think you need to know a little bit more about my absolute love for Kurt Browning. I mean, if you watch any other episode, you know, because I mention him every time. But I love Kurt Browning. I've always loved him. He's my absolute favorite figure skater in the world and like an amazing person. And I just admire him so much. And I have pretty much since I can remember, I'm pretty sure, and it's really vague, my first memory of ever seeing figure skating was when I was a five. And I'm almost positive it was Kurt Browning on TV skating. And because I can't remember when I started loving him, I just always have. I've always been this big fan of figure skating and Kurt Browning's sort of been the the best figure skater in the whole world in my eyes and always will be. So. so when I was 11, Kurt Browning came to the bay to do autographs. And of course, oh, oopsie, sorry, I just knocked you. <laughs> I mean, I knocked the camera, uh-oh. Um, my, of course, I begged my mom to take me, and I stood in this big, long line, and whenever I tell the story, I tell people I waited five hours, and I'm pretty sure it was almost five hours, at least three. I think it was five. It was close to five. Anyway, so I waited and waited, and I didn't even care. Like It was like this huge line, but as soon as I could like see him off in the distance, up on this little stage signing, I just sort of stared at him the whole time, and waited and waited and waited and waited and then eventually a couple hours in like a security guard or something came and basically said like any people past this point in the line you won't be able to get an autograph because Kurt Browning has to go and of course I was past that point in the line and I was so disappointed but I stayed in the line anyway because I just wanted to keep <laughs> this probably sounds very stalkerish but I was only 11 I was just a little girl um not that I probably wouldn't do this now as an adult but I just wanted to watch him sign autographs because I was so enthralled anyway when that point came in line, of course, Kurt Browning being who he is, was like, oh, just let everybody come. So I got to get my autograph, and I went up on stage. I can't even describe to you how nervous I was. It was just completely starstruck, completely nervous. And I spent all this time beforehand making him this little, I don't know if you remember these, but these friendship bracelets. He made them out of yarn or embroidery floss, and I spent all this time making it, and I figured like I could give it to him, and he would know how much... I love him and how much of an inspiration he is, but when I actually got up on stage and he was like right there, I, I couldn't say anything. I don't think I'd be able to say anything now. I could not say anything. I could not, I could barely breathe. I don't think I was breathing. And I was just like watching him and I remember he had this like cream colored sweater on and all I did was I, <laughs> instead of saying anything like a normal person might, all I did was I took my little bracelet and I reached out and placed it uh, on his sleeve while he was signing. So I placed this on his sleeve and I, he looked over and he said thank you and I'm sure he thought I was completely nuts or something and then I got my autograph and left the stage and never said anything and um, I went home that night and I was so overwhelmed and I, I, I remember crying not because I was sad but I was just so overwhelmed and I couldn't believe I'd met him and I couldn't believe like I don't know anyway so that's just an example of how much um, of a fan I am and so this all to say that Right before Christmas, I have a, well, I have a Twitter account that goes with this figure skating channel. I don't know if any of you are on Twitter, but if you are, you can follow me if you'd like. Um, my Twitter, Twitter name is figure skate heart. And um, I send out tweets all about figure skating, mostly when I'm like watching an event or something like that. I'll, I'll send out sort of my thoughts and stuff like that. But anyway, I, right before Christmas, there was a, a Christmas special, Christmas skating special on TV and Kurt Brennan was skating it. And of course I was watching it and I sent out a little tweet saying, um, Christmas is and just saying how incredible Kurt Browning was and then a couple days later I got up in the morning and I checked my Twitter and he tweeted me so <laughs> This may not excite you, but it was so thrilling that you're like I looked at it on my um, Little iPad thing. I like looked at it dropped it couldn't believe what I was seeing I like screamed I had to pick it up again I was sort of in shock, but basically he tweeted me back something like he must have read what I said and then he tweeted me back saying Oh gosh, with a little smiley face. So I don't know. It was just so neat to have him like say something back to me. I mean, I know I'm just I'm I'm nobody really, but it was just cool that he acknowledged that my tweet and and wrote something back. So it was very very exciting for me. So anyway, I wanted to share that. And um, of course, this will not be the last you hear me talking about Kurt Browning. But so the rest of the episode, I kind of wanted to talk about, and I talked I promised this last time was the Olympics and. 
Curb Branding is kind of a perfect segue for me to talk about my feelings for the Olympics because um, I think that he sort of symbolizes what I really love about the Olympics. Let me explain that, like, um, I mean, Kurt Browning has never won an Olympic medal, even though, of course, he has won many world medals and stuff like that. But I, um, I can, I just, I can remember so vividly watching him, especially in his last Olympics, because I was a bit older. I can so vividly remember, like, rooting for him so much, and, like, just, like, my heart and my throat when I was watching him, and then, like, being, you know, being devastated for him when, when, um, when he didn't have a good skate, and then, but I think the thing about it that stuck with me so much was like how he handled himself, and and it was like, well, one of the things I've always loved about Kerberning is how open he is with people, and how you can just sort of like you 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 feel like you're getting to know him, even though you know you, he's only on the TV screen. And I just loved how open he was about how he felt about what had happened, and then I loved his long program. It just felt so. It was even more inspirational somehow. It was even more inspirational because he was able to pick himself back up after, you know, having the weight of the world on his shoulders and all that pressure on this, like, international stage. And, you know, just skate, skate for the love of skating, even though he knew that there was no medal. And it was just really meaningful. And it's something that stuck with me. And then afterwards, I can remember that across Canada, I think people had sent in little things of gold that they had. And someone had made up, like, a, a gold maple leaf for Kurt Browning. And, and I remember when I thinking like, man, you know you affect people, you know that, you know, you've made a positive influence on the world and like, on the people that watch you. When someone, like, when all the people got together and did something like that, just to say like, you know, you may not have won an Olympic medal, but you sort of certainly won like a medal in our minds and hearts. And I think, I just think that's so special and so. The Olympics. I've always loved the, I've always found the Olympics really exciting, the Winter Olympics. and really special and I have always thought like I wanted to somehow be part of them and I know that sounds weird because I mean I'm not an athlete or anything but I always thought someday I'd like to be somehow part of them not just a spectator but in some way involved because it's just such a, a special thing that the world can be it's such um, a positive thing in the world when there's so much going on it's a positive thing for for a lot of countries that are involved to focus on and for athletes to aim for and it sort of like you know brings like the best of the best and it's really an amazing thing to watch so my the one thing about but so that all that being said whenever you know when those four years go by whenever it comes time to be Olympic the Olympic season again I look forward to it because I love watching the Olympics and at the same time there's a little part of me that feels like it's it's bittersweet and the reason it's bittersweet is because I feel like you're losing people if that makes sense I mean obviously every four years a lot of skaters retire, tend to wait and retire in the Olympic year. What's happening after Patrick? I don't want, I don't want Patrick to leave or like Tessa, Virtue, and Scott Moyer. Like they're probably gonna, I mean, for sure retire. I just hate saying goodbye to whatever you know generation of skaters are now moving on, and then you have to start reinvesting. And every time it comes around, I always think, well, there's not going to be anybody. There's not going to be any, anyone that I think is amazing or enjoy watching so much and they're always somebody always does come along but stuff but you always miss those people I, I miss those people I wear. and of course you can follow them in the professional world and stuff like that but not all skaters go on to something that you can follow but I feel like this time around we're gonna lose we're gonna lose a lot of skaters that are are have played a pretty big role in the figure skating world I mean Patrick Chan and Daisuke Takashi, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer are just some that are coming to my mind right now but I'm sure there's a whole host of others but now I'm talking about it, I'm getting this like feeling, oh gosh, I get this like sort of sad. Then when the Olympics actually come, I sort of set that aside and like watch it avidly and, and sort of throw myself into the Olympic spirit and what's going on and, and then it's afterwards that I always think, oh, yeah, it's over. And then you build up for the next one and the next one. Oh, anyway, does anyone else feel that way ever? <laughs> I do sometimes. I guess now that I've shared that, let's look ahead. We're almost, it's almost January, so next up is the Canadians, which is an event I always look forward to. I love seeing all the Canadian skaters, and and um, it's going to be pretty interesting to see. And, of course, this year with deciding the Olympic team, it's going to be pretty awesome. In particular, I'm really looking forward to um, uh, Weaver Poget's skate, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the men's event. I'd like to see, I mean, obviously, Patrick, but... Below that, like who's gonna come out and um, 
like who's gonna really wow us so oh I wanted to mention that on my last video I try to keep you guys updated I have had a few views which is pretty fantastic so whoever you are thank you very much and um, I'll see you next time bye